Hello, my beautiful abundant healers. I am so excited to do our live stream here today. If you don't know me, my name is Brianna McWilliam and I am an author, educator, Reiki practitioner, and creative arts therapist with over 12 years of clinical experience in the field. I also happen to be an online entrepreneur and I am absolutely living my dream in alignment with my sole purpose, putting my talents and skills online and have scaled my business beyond the one-to-one -one business model to the tune of bringing in up to $10,000 per month in online revenue. Now, I am so excited because we have stepped into our regular enrollment period for my signature course, The Abundant Healer, 90 Days to Scale Your Practice Online. And so this is a one-stop shop for therapists, coaches, and healers who want to learn how to create, launch, and scale either an online group coaching program or a passive income funnel. And this is even if you have never made a dollar online, constructed a single course, or have a marketing list. Additionally, this is all without wasting your time on expensive programs, piecemealing different things together, or on experts and gurus. Um, and if you stick with me or join my private Facebook group, you'll learn more about my opinion of experts and gurus. <laughs> Now, in celebration of our open enrollment period, we are offering a free Master Your Mindset five-day challenge, and I am so excited to invite you here on this challenge. But before I get into the details of that, my plan this month is to really tackle some of the mindset-related feedback that I get in my private Facebook group of over 500 therapists, coaches, and healers just like you, who find themselves struggling with energetic boundaries, burnout on the job, feeling undervalued for what they do, feeling overwhelmed or not knowing where to begin with social marketing and media, um, not knowing how to attract and keep high, bank, high paying clients, not knowing where or how to begin to start with expanding their practices, feeling like there's just no time to foster their creativity. Now, to my mind, before we can even begin to map out any solutions to any of these problems, you really have to get your head on straight first, okay? And so today, I really want to address a question posed um, by one of my group members around mindset. And her question was, how do I step into my own authority without ego? First of all, what a delicious and juicy and crunchy question. <laughs> and secondly, I believe there are three steps to unpacking what this question is really asking. And I believe that to be, how can I heal the splits within myself so I can confidently stand in my fullest sovereignty without fear or judgment? And so what is really being examined here is this perception of the ego itself. Okay, so in this instance, the ego appears to be understood as part of this kind of puffed up, you know, arrogant or full of yourself kind of selfish identity, right? And that tends to lead or lead us down this kind of cascading waterfall of guilt and envy, right? And so there are three steps to moving from this perception of the ego to standing sovereign in your own authority. And they are, number one, examine your beliefs about selfishness and ditch those, right? Second, ask yourself what role guilt plays in your scarcity attitudes. And third, you have to let go of a fear of envy. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about these three things, and then I'm going to tell you more about our Mindset Reset Challenge, right? Our Master Your Mindset Challenge. It's a five-day challenge, so hang with me because if you like any of what I'm going to talk about with you today, you are going to want to be a part of our free challenge, all right? So the first step is to examine your beliefs about selfishness and ditch them, right? So we're taught from a very young age not to own ourselves and our own power. We're taught that having a command of yourself is arrogant, fresh, pretentious, precocious, misbehaved, disobedient, rebellious, troublemaking, and it costs your loved ones terrible pain and anguish, right? Don't do that or you'll hurt your brother's feelings and he'll never get over it. Your mother would die if she saw you dress like that. Who are you to claim anything? What expertise do you have? It doesn't matter what you feel. If you can't prove it, it's not true and it's irrational, right? So if you do something, 
that feels resonant with an inner voice, but perhaps may rub someone else the wrong way, it tends to be labeled as self-serving. And we all know that is the worst thing you can call someone, right? But I'd like to examine for a moment the paradox of selfishness. So how many of you have ever heard or even uttered the expression yourself, it's always about you. What about me? You see, you cannot remark on selfishness without committing the crime yourself. <laughs> when you accuse someone of being selfish for the purposes of instilling guilt so that you may get your way, it's like saying, how dare you serve yourself? You should be serving me. That's right, me or that person, or that person, or that person, anyone but yourself. So who are you to regard your own well-being as above the masses, right? You are not worthy. You must earn and deserve well-being. I'm sorry, that is some screwy logic. <laughs> not only that, but it is a logic that leads to a lot of guilt and pointless self-flagellation, okay? And that brings me to the second point, which is, to ask yourself what role guilt really plays in your scarcity attitudes, okay? So service, being of service is not about scarcity. It's not about self-sacrifice. It's, it's not even about deservedness. It's about being in alignment with yourself and allowing your heart song to sing so that you have something to serve with, right? So the more that we try to serve others without feeding ourselves first, the more we become disconnected from our own essence, what I dare say is like your own natural born divinity. And so we forget our precious and important and purposeful place in this world. And we spend our time trying to bridge the gap by doing the very thing that will only widen the distance. We focus on anything or anyone other than ourselves, and we fall down the spiral of blame games and what I like to call martyred victimhood, right? And then it gets so bad that we don't even know what we want anymore. We don't even know who we are anymore. And we become institutionalized at that point by our jobs, our cultures, our perceptions of right and wrong. We become aggressive and preoccupied with righteousness and punitive moralities because if somehow we can just prove our worthiness by being on the right side of history, then maybe we will be worthy one day of self-fulfillment. Maybe one day I can do the thing that makes me feel good first, right? That's a losing game. That is a losing game because that gap, it just keeps getting wider and wider and wider every step you take because that is a step away from yourself, okay? And that leads me to my third point, which is you got to let go of a fear of envy. Got to let go of it. Now, let's say... Let's say maybe you're not so disconnected. Let's say maybe you are aware of your light and you've got an inkling to let it shine, right? Now the fear of envy arises, a fear of being bullied, of being ostracized by those that cannot source their own light. And so they'd rather beat the drum of selfishness and deservedness and demand their piece of the pie, right? Stepping into that selfishness paradox. If I can't live my life, you can't live yours either, right? And the thing is, yes. Yes, there will always be those witch hunters, but thank God it's not the Middle Ages anymore, right? And the more you let your light shine, in spite of those naysayers, right, the more those that do resonate with you being in alignment with who you are, right, you yourself, who you really are, they're going to be able to see you a lot better and they're going to find you just like a lighthouse in the storm, okay? Be the lighthouse in the storm for somebody and you will not be alone. So just to recap here, how can I heal the splits within myself so I can confidently stand in my fullest sovereignty without fear or judgment or fear of judgment, again, 
These are those three steps. Examine your beliefs about selfishness and ditch them. Service is not about sacrifice. It's about being in alignment with self so that you've got something to serve with. Okay. Now, the second thing was ask yourself what role guilt plays in your scarcity attitudes. So whose voice do you still allow to control you? Who was the loudest harbinger of right and wrong in your life? Okay. And the third thing is examine your fears of envy and just let them go. Right. And that is really what you need to do to start loving the part of you that doesn't feel worthy because it's listening too well to the people that are beating that drum. Okay. So if you have enjoyed any of these topics, if any of these bits of information resonate with you, and you are a therapist, coach, and or healer who wants to share their message with a ton of people and make boy band money doing what they love without compromising their principles and even in fact deepening your spiritual practices, my upcoming free Master Your Mindset five day challenge is right for you. Now over the course of five days, you will learn how to kick those scarcity attitudes to the curb and take the fear out of your desires for abundance and financial success. How to identify and release two important types of limiting beliefs that are holding you back from creating the kind of client and cash flow that you want. How to use mindfulness and creativity to practice being in an abundant vibration and activating the law of attraction. This is spiritual wealth we're talking about here. And lastly, how to take inspired action steps towards calling in more clients, cash flow, and all the abundances that you seek. And by the way, that are your birthright. And so this challenge altogether will include five daily live streams, five daily emails, including a synopsis and a daily assignment, access to all the replays for any days that you might miss, exclusive access to a Q&A on day five, access to our private Facebook group for the Abundant Healer program, and a special bonus offer on day five for continuing the journey if any of this resonates with you. And so during this five day challenge, I'm gonna share with you the secrets to how I managed to throw out my scarcity attitudes and start calling in true abundance, doing what I love to do, utilizing my talents and the skill sets as a therapist, coach, and healer. And as I said before, to the tune of making up to 10 grand per month in online revenue, specifically selling self uh, help and personal development courses in live group coaching programs, as well as pa through passive income funnels. And so these are the secrets that I tell you in my signature course, The Abundant Healer, 90 Days to Scale Your Practice Online, which is currently open for enrollment. So again, if you're in private practice and you're ready to bust through the ceiling of that one-to-one -one business model, or you're just starting out and you're overwhelmed by the cost of renting space or trying to establish referral networks and are struggling with how to market yourself effectively. Maybe you are working in the field and you're just tired of the bureaucratic nonsense that hinders your ability to do your job effectively, let alone with an ounce of joy and pleasure, right? Or maybe you're interested in working with soul clients that are eager and dedicated to working with you and to showing up for their own transformational processes. And maybe you're just craving a creative outlet and an opportunity to share your message while bringing in passive income and or conducting live online group coaching programs. Well, if any of that applies to you, this five day challenge, it could well be the most important commitment that you make to yourself and your growing practice this year. So if you are ready to take huge strides towards calling in your soul clients, increasing your cash flow, and stepping into what I like to think of as your financial and spiritual sovereignty in only five days, you need to join that challenge now. Today is the day. Join it now <laughs> and get ready for the wild ride that we are going to be having the last week in April.
So I hope this has resonated with you and I hope to see you on the inside. So register now for our Master Your Mindset Challenge and you will be so glad that you did.